What is this? Number 36. Time to be. Deep, any questions? Mm. I feel like they're going to get deep with us now. Uh, oh, interesting. <laughs> so, Kiki, how did Jordan Peele pitch this character to you? Oh, it's such a hard question to answer. Um, so I remember I got the call that he was interested in talking to me about his film. And then, you know, he FaceTimed me. It was the best Zoom of my life. I was just like gagged beyond belief. It was around New Year's, I think, we had that first call back back, back then. Um, anyway, and he was just kind of like, I'm doing this thing. You know, he was also very, like, mysterious with me about it. He was like, I'll send you the script, but, like, you know, this character, you know, you know, he started naming kind of, like, archetypes, like, you know, like, this is what he's thinking and that but it was all kind of still open and he was like I'll send you the script and, and stuff like that but you know these are the themes and these are the things I, I, I want to talk about with this film and you know I, I think you'd be great for it and then he just sent me the script uh, but it was all still very obscure. My, my cards were very close to my chest I mean full disclosure I wrote this character I never had anyone else in mind for this and which I told her pretty pretty quickly but then pretty quickly it really became um, a sort of uh, building this character together, I think very early on, and I was able to really write the movie um, knowing Kiki's sort of take on it uh, in some way, which is uh, true, truly magical. I can't wait for people to see it. Jordan, you've done a lot of rewriting with this script, right? And reshaping some of the characters and collaborating with your actors to flesh them out, correct? Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, belief, I'm a believer that you know, collaboration is the key to greater things. That, you know, there, there are artists that can achieve great things alone, but um, I'm not one of them. I'm, I believe that my purpose here is to um, achieve something that I couldn't achieve alone. And so when I bring my actors in, it's very much uh, important to me to build a relationship with uh, someone where they can be the, they can know the character as much or hopefully more than me uh, and be my, my expert on that character. So it's very much a collaboration and, and that, that's part of why um, I, I think I've, I, I get the privilege of working with uh, the, just the best actors in the world. We like to say since the moment pitches could move, we had skin in the game. Fans have been theorizing that NOPE stands for not of planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, that one. What was... four words best describe NOPE? Does not have to be a backronym like that. Can be any four words that you think best describe it. Mm, four words to describe Nope. Um, I would say <clears throat> it is an adventure. Your turn. Um, yeah, an adventure. I don't know if this is one word. I'm trying to figure out one word to say. Um, uh, so adventure. Epic. Epic. It also, it's like. I mean, I was gonna say like character driven, but that's not one word. But it's like it's these true. these character, we needed, yeah. We needed yeah. four. Yeah, so character driven. Yeah, that's it. You know, yeah, that's what I would say. Also, I have to ask you, uh, because I know you did not think, uh, you know, not of planet Earth. But what did you think when people came with that theory? Weren't you gay? What you talking about? I didn't think of that. Oh, you did. That what was what you, you meant. Talk, you to th that is what you meant. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, there, there is. Uh, wow, that might you know, be one I, thing they got right. I, I was trying to not. You know, let you know people. Uh, I was trying to let people figure that out one for themselves. You know, wow. so I wasn't leaning into that. But the cat's out of the bag. You know, we are talking about a UFO here, and it is not of planet Earth. And it also, of course, refers to um, how black people would, uh, what we would say if we saw a UFO. No, it's like no, no extraterrestrial. The kids are gonna live for that. Yeah, yeah, not of planet Earth. Wow. You got it, okay? Yes, y'all got one thing right. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. I thought I'd never get that in a million years. I mean, we were we were trying no one predicted everything is another one or never open presents early, throwing all these out. I got a regular uh, Tom Holland over here. <laughs> My goodness, what's going on? I had to put him on the spot. <laughs> well, Kiki, what four words best describe Jordan Peele? Oh my gosh. Oh my be gosh. Kind. Please, please be kind. Oh man. Special. Oh. I mean that. It is, I don't even know why it made me like get emotional when you asked me that because this is one of the most incredible human beings I've ever met in my life. I'm not kidding. Special, um, intelligent, mm. empathic, mm. really in tune with you, people. I knew, I knew she was gonna go that way. <laughs> and artistic, mm. like a true artist, like wow. truly an artist. Uh, there's so many other words that I could use, but Working with Jordan has changed my life. 
honestly. It's like, I'm so happy that uh, I got this experience. I can't even tell you. This is huge. Look, we, I, you know, when, when I first met Kiki, we, um, it was on Key and Peele. I don't know if you know this. That's crazy. So a, a role, she, she came in, she was 17, 18, yep. <laughs> and she crushed it. And I just remember at that time thinking what many of us, you know, already knew from her work, but just thinking from meeting her, like, oh my gosh, there's something different. There's a different kind of precision, spirit, uh, an ability there, so I'm giving, I'm throwing it all back at you because I'm, I'm because, but it, but it's true. It's like you don't you don't know if Kiki gonna be like who you think she is, but she's that and more. Yeah, so it's a love love fest. I know and, it is. And, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. What was it, what was that original Key and Peele sketch? Do you remember which it was? Which uh, one it was? Yeah, it was the uh, Obama anger translator. Yeah where uh, Michelle had a anger translator. We had Nicole Randall Johnson, uh, actress from Mad TV, come in and play the anger translator. And then Kiki right. uh, came in at the end, got the tag of the scene, and just right from there. I mean, she was already a star, so she was doing us a favor Stop at that point. No way. It's true. And then, but um, I remember I was like, oh my gosh, like that's somebody to work with. And then it, that's what I did. When I called her, I was like, yeah, we, I knew then. Malia, use your translator. If you don't let me go to this party, I will get a tattoo on my face. Have fun. So crazy wow. how time goes like that. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Uh, so what for, or what film should we watch to get ready for Nope? That is ready. such a great <clears throat> question. I don't, you know, I, I want to answer this question Carefully. a little bit enigmatically in that, like, sure. I, I don't want you to know uh, what's going on. But uh, Nope is a spectacle. And it's, and it's about spectacle. And it's about how we view and digest spectacle. And it's the horror version of that. Watch King Kong, watch Wizard of Oz, watch Close Encounters. And you should watch, just watch The Scorpion King, just cause. <laughs> you think it's funny? It's a little bit funny. Whole franchise? Hey, start with it's, it's your journey. I'm gonna start you off at, you know, The Rock as a mummy with no wrapping? On him? Yes. <laughs> on, a, yeah. on a camel. And then how oh, far yeah. How far do you want to go into that series? Is that just, That's up to you. Kiki, what moment shocked or scared you the most in a Jordan Peele movie? So I think always is going to be, always is going to be, now sink. Now sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. That... Woo! That is literally so chilling to me to this damn day. I mean, I'm, I find moments in my life where I'm like, she just tried to now sink me. Like, it's spooky. That scene, woo, that will forever be just spooky. She just tried to sink me. Seriously. Seriously. I, I like how you use that. Spooky. Woo. The sunken place is a concept became Part of our culture, I think people started saying, "You're in the sunken place." He's in the sunken place. Oh my god! Yeah. There's something about being yeah. in, you know, in, in someone's presence that is supposed to be a caring for you. The, 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 somebody who's supposed to be in, supposed to be in well, in, in comforting hands of like a therapist, and to, the idea oh that they could have you and they could turn, they could turn dark real quick. Yeah. It scared me so much that I, you know, I'm, I'm into a lot of different things. I'm into, you know, oh, shamans, Reiki, all type of thing. I went on a detox and they offered hypnosis. I said, oh no. <laughs> oh no. See, this is probably the negative effect of my films is people aren't getting help, but they should. I'm but... done with the, I was like, hypnosis. My man Jordan told me. <laughs> Don't cite me, Oh no. Please. Negative impact on the <laughs> mental health community. Jordan is an incredible impressionist. Kiki, who have you seen him imitate the best? See, I see what I, I see what you're doing. I see what you've Whoa. done. I, 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 I left Key and Peele years ago, <laughs> and yet you've brought up impressions, and like she's gonna say some stuff, and I'm gonna be an instant ham, and I'm gonna just jump at the. I mean. Chance, you don't know me, okay? I love. <laughs> I don't chill. You know, for for IMDb, I don't. I think there are two that are my favorite. Sell myself like that. Neil deGrasse, when I you like, did the well, like. Well, and the thing is about Neil deGrasse <laughs> is what, and you gotta you gotta understand she's kind of like a black Jeff Goldblum. 
<laughs> and who has uh, theories about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe what we experience as one point in time space could actually be a lesion of points. Thank you. Yeah, so, but no, I, I don't do that anymore, ma'am. I don't do that anymore. Huh. I have uh, integrity. But yeah, I love Neil deGrasse, and I also love <laughs> the character that you do. Is it Megan? Is it Pagan? What's, you know the- no. See, you know damn well what her name is. You know damn well who she is. Why, why you have to make me? Why you have to make me? Access. <laughs> love. I don't wanna do. Don't be sorry. Be better. Yes, it's Megan. Megan. Please. Megan. And I don't Megan. do that anymore. I don't do that routine. I don't do, so I don't dress in a dress anymore. I am a proud black man now, and I'm a leader of my community. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a leader of my community. Cosmically speaking, the distinction is meaningless. Who does the best Jordan impression? Uh, Who does the best well, Jordan I, impression? Well, I bet you do. Oh. Oh, that is do. hard. Okay, let me see. I bet you do. do you think no, because you think? have done it on set. I've seen it. You've been like, Jordan be talking about. So so, so give me a, because Jordan is a lot of people, obviously, as you can see. He can he can jump into many different bags. Mm -hmm. So if I'm giving Jordan on set, like, what's the scenario? Give me a Jordan okay, on set scenario. Okay, so like scenario. if I'm coming, if I'm like, okay, and uh, cut. And if I'm coming so, into so, it. So, so, like, so. So, so, come over here. Mm -mm. So, so, what I'm thinking is. What do you think about what would happen if see. she stopped? See, because when I think about the the, the yeah. yeah 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 she thinks I'm Jeffrey Wright. Yeah yeah yeah. She thinks I'm Jeffrey Wright. <laughs> As Basquiat. Who said who said that? No, but you She's really because you know what Jordan is always processing and he processes much faster than the, the average person and it's like always in his head. So he's very like wait, 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 wait. so yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Okay. Well, let's. Just, Let's go. It's also and it's we, like what happened there. It's coffee and weed together <laughs> as well. It makes this thing happen where you just you, you know you're just in it's this in creative that. place. You're it's great to watch place. though. Yeah. Because you get it, and then we just all follow along <laughs> and try to find our way. I like that dude. That was really good. I like that dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Can I get one more? Yes. yes. Okay. Amazing. So who was the easiest to scare on set? Easiest to scare? What, did, did we do any scare yeah, tactics? Yeah, like, did we do that? For, for people, you know, we were all scared by the world, to be honest. When we were, we were shooting mm. this and, and the world went crazy, I mean, here. Um, Probably the scariest thing was trying to not get shut down. Yeah, well, there's that. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, I think, but I think the biggest sort of Frady cat, who the biggest, who's the biggest, you know, I would, I mean, he's not here to defend himself, but I would, I would reckon that if you put, like, say, a fake spider in Daniel Kaluuya's bed. Oh, yeah that he would uh, lose his proverbial mm -hmm. you know, Probably so break, I'm just gonna put that out there. Break out uh, of his American accent. I don't oh, want to wish that on him, but yeah. he would break out of his character. Yeah, he would. For that one. He would, because he kind of stays in that mode, but like if that happened, he would be like, what the f No, nah, yeah. We love Daniel, <laughs> you know. You know we like, love Daniel. Someone, someone to prank, were to prank him in that way, I would imagine it would work, I don't know. Don't try it. Don't try don't it. Try it. Please, nope. Yeah, no. Nope. And certainly yeah. don't show him this video <laughs> of me <laughs> saying anything. No. Da Daniel, we, you know, we got to work. Once again, my favorite actor in the world. Like, he's so intense. And, and one of the yeah. cornerstones of this movie, the relationship between these two characters. So OJ and Emerald, it's a sibling relationship. And it really is this story between, they've got this wonderful chemistry in the movie where she's the spark and he's the discipline and he's the, he's the whoa. And uh, what happens together with them is just, is magic. And yeah, I don't know, if you, uh, if you have a brother or sister, I would recommend you take them to see this movie. Oh, yes. Right? Yes, wow. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Taking mine, I have a couple. Go baby, let's go! And lastly, who made you laugh the most on set? Oh, who made us laugh? Well, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I even hesitated for a second because it seems so obvious, but no, Kiki is very funny. I mean, Kiki is like a strong, uh, beautiful woman who sometimes acts like a seven-year-old black man. Well, I knew you were going to She say sometimes that. acts like a seven-year-old black man. Sometimes you'll see her and she's like, wait, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? Where are we going now? And I'm like, look, you are in a, you are in a cocktail dress. Why are you? 
I, you know, it's on? so funny and it's it's interesting, right? Because I definitely that he's one hundred percent right. But I feel like even more as I've gotten older and you know my experience on set and just in the body of who. I created Emerald to be, that came out even more. I was yes, like pulling yes. so much from my father and yes. my father is a 60 year old black man. Like he's, mm. he is knocking on that door and he's very like, okay, okay. So uh, tell me what you need. Okay, uh, mm. all right, all right, all right. And so then I'll just come over there and like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, man, yeah. Okay, all right, brother. All right, brother, let's go ahead and get into it then. <laughs> I don't know why. But, but just, it's literally it's crazy. But it is. It's and it's and it is in you and it is you and and but you're right. It was something that we pulled out for the character as Absolutely. well because of the connection we wanted to build with her father who um, passes early in the movie. Yeah, I almost told a little bit. This is who is scary talking to these people. I don't. I can't tell them nothing about the damn no, movie. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you both so much. I didn't think, honestly, I could be more excited for this, but just everything All you've right. told me. I, I, I mean, I want to see this 70-year-old character that you're playing now. <laughs> this is amazing. If, yes, if, you do, I, my friend. Even if yes, it just has to be behind the scenes footage, yeah. Let's go. Where? I don't know. Anywhere. I got me a little situation in Atwater thing. Definitely hit that up. Mark. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, oh, yeah. From what I can tell from the trailer, Cowboy hat is a very good look. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah. So how did Jordan Peele pitch this character to you? I don't remember how he pitched it. I think um, he had me read, read the script, and then he opened the door for a collaboration. I think um, something like Jupe really needed like a foundational collaboration. So, um, yeah, we just had many, many, many conversations, um, and it was a joy because I feel like that's also what – the movie going experience is for a Jordan Peele movie. It's very collaborative. Yeah, absolutely. Because first you watch it and then you think about it and then you watch it again and you get something else out of it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here, you are gonna witness an absolute spectacle. Can you talk about what you did add to that character or what, what your perception of him was? Um, I don't know if I can go into detail. I would say I think mm. someone like Jupe could easily be put in a box. And perhaps every character in this film has a box that's set for them in some ways in how all of us kind of view each other in reality. But um, I think the goal always was to make uh, Jupe uh, and perhaps all the characters just deeply human. Um, something where you're seeing past your first... Um, understanding of who he is and um, maybe having a deeper understanding of why he is the way he is. Did Jordan warn you in advance about anything about the character, like that it would require a cowboy hat? No, but I didn't object. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. Like I said, <laughs> a good one. So fans have theorized that NOPE stands for not of planet Earth. What four words do you think best describe NOPE? For your eyes only. Awesome. I just okay. made that up right now. And I don't know if that is deep or like nothing. <laughs> or a James Bond title. You know, yeah, but. just, it might be nothing. Um, but that's what came to mind. <laughs> and what four words best describe Jordan Peele? For your eyes only. Okay. okay. So what happens next? What's the last thing you said nope to? Um... A lot of these questions um, hmm. in a prior yeah. interview um, just couldn't answer any of them, so I apologize. <laughs> no worries. You want people to go in and be surprised. You want them to have that collaborative experience, right? You don't want to ruin these things for them. I really think Jordan is like talking to everybody, but he's also talking directly to you. You know what I mean? Mm. Like by direct talking directly to you, he's talking to everyone. Action! Yeah, it is a very intimate experience, I think, watching this film. What film should we watch to get ready for Nope? Ah, uh, maybe the internet. <laughs> just, just start there? Just the general vast ocean of the internet that, that will, uh, <laughs> that might prime you. So like start with cat videos, work your way to like flat earth conspiracies. And Man, just all the things in between, to... like you just need to go on Reddit for like a couple of days, just like see all the gnarly, gnarly things on that thing. All right, all right. <laughs> Are you ready? What's the moment that shocked or scared you the most from a Jordan Peele movie? He knows how to make 
something that's very seen before move in very uncanny ways. And those are always the creepiest things that I think he does really well. It's someone you've seen before or like a silhouette you've seen before, but it has just that one little extra awkward part of it that makes it like very um, terrifying, if that makes sense. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, what's coming to mind is in Get Out, you see the gardener, and then when he first does that, you know, straight dead-eyed run at directly yeah, at the yeah, care, yeah. at Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah. Terrifying. Terrifying. Unexpected. No idea that was coming. Yes, yes. Or like just the pace of things. Um, there's a there's a part in Nope that I really thought was extra creepy. Yeah, he's a master. Who made you laugh the most? Oh, everybody. Kiki's so funny. Daniel's so funny. Jordan's so funny. Yeah, great humans. So funny. So I, I can't choose one. They're all hilarious. Is that hard then to switch back into being scared, you know, portraying scared after you're having that kind of, you know, that good time offset? Or does that ease the tension? It, it didn't affect anything. It actually felt like an extension of the scenes sometimes. You know, it's like... It's not bad that we're joking around because also people joke around in real life. And it's, and it's playing in that space where you can see the same circumstance but see it slightly from a different angle to be like, that is what I've seen before, but that's hella creepy. What did you see in that cloud? If you had a personal warning label, what would it be? Give me water. I'm dehydrated. You mean it's like a sticker that comes, but like it precedes me on most like yeah. social interactions? Yeah, but yeah. I think it should just say I'm dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. What is the role you consider that changed your life? Hmm. Oh, there's been so many um, that have been so formative and um, so fortunate in my life. Um, obviously, Walking Dead was one of the most fortuitous uh, things that has happened in my life. Such a simple thing. I know what it means now. Burning was pretty incredible. Playing that character was uh, intense and life-changing. Yeah, I'd say those two things. Do you have a all-time favorite horror movie? I really am nostalgic for the Nightmare on Elm Street films. I think those were ter most terrifying to me because I watched them as a child and had terrible dreams. And I actually had this reoccurring dream where Freddy Krueger would meet me in my kindergarten classroom, stuck to the wall of the blackboard area, like a spider just staring at me with like a long tongue. And then um, uh, once I like healed that part of my uh, past trauma, um, I never had that dream again, so. And then I found out that Robert England said he thinks Freddy, Freddy Krueger uh, is kind of like a personification of childhood abandonment. And I was like, whoa, gnarly, yeah. Now that adds that extra layer of scariness. So scary, yeah, 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 yeah. We've gone there now, yeah. we've gone there just now. You and yeah. I are deeply connected. Were you able to keep a souvenir from set? There's this cool hat that's in Jupe's office. That's all I'll say that I'd like. Yeah. I'm gonna just put it out there. Yeah. I'd like that hat. Just Whoa. into this guy. Give me the, can I have that hat? Here we go. For any questions, BP Mark. How did Jordan Peele pitch this character to you? So, first, I, I found out that it's a Jordan Peele film, and I, I didn't care what I was doing. I, is, I would play a bush or a tree or a piece of grass in a Jordan Peele film. You guys gonna tell me what's going on? Hell no. no. Actually, the character was different than the way that I portrayed it, and in the sides, it was uh, dummy sides, of course, so uh, it was a pretty plain scene. The character was just known as someone who's clutch, and works at a tech store, and that's kind of the only basis that I got from it. But I've kind of brought this dark comedy to it um, of someone who just really hated their job. And for some reason, that really uh, 
tickled Jordan's funny bone, and he said he hasn't laughed like that in a long time, and it was far different than what he was looking for. And I remember in the callback, uh, I, I, I mean, I was freaking out that I got a callback, by the way, and I got to meet Jordan through Zoom, and we were chatting, and then I, I, do, I do the read, and he redirects me a bunch, and then uh, two days after that, they wanted to do an improv session on Zoom with Jordan. And uh, I hop on the Zoom call, and he's like, hey, uh, you ready for the session? I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you're familiar with the dialogue and the scenes, right? And I was like, oh, I was told that it's just an improv session. He was like, oh, well, you know, I kind of need to see it because the character that you brought is far different than what I wrote for. And he's like, in order to get your character involved in this movie, I'd have to rewrite my entire script. And I was like, dang, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm sure you don't want to do that. So, yeah, I'll, I'll read whatever. And he's like, you know what, though? That's what I'm going to do. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm going to rewrite my entire script. You got the job. And I started crying. Uh, and it was an insane moment. And so Jordan really rewrote the script catered to the character that I brought into the first read. And he's very collaborative in the process. Um, so I'm very excited for people to see this angsty, heartbroken tech person. So we'll we'll see what I do on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that something? Did you bring that from personal experience, a job that you really hate? Uh, it seems like, you know, you, you tapped into something really real that he responded to to rewrite the script. <laughs> well, yeah, it was um, there was that aspect that I brought to it, but also the other aspect I brought because the sides were so pretty simple because it wasn't really a right. part of the script. So. Um, and it was like only three pages. And then me and my reader that I was working with, shout out to Chibukem Uche. One of us is lying. Check out his show. Uh, he helped me as well. And we were breaking it down being like, there's no way that this is just it. Like this is a Jordan Peele film. There's substance. There has to be underlying meaning. So there's a point in the dummy sides where they start talking about something. And I took it as okay, maybe we speak in code and we're just using that as the top layer, but there's underlying meanings. We're saying certain things that mean other things. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, all right, I'm running some Bitcoin operation underground thing that people can't know about, or I'm a drug dealer that's dealing things and people can't know. So I'm talking about coyotes in the sense, but in my mind, I'm thinking of other things. So we kind of ran with that of like, oh, so you know that we're talking about this, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that, that. So we ran with that, and I feel like that brought it and diversified the scene into something that kind of gave it life and mystique, and I think that got the attraction of Jordan, and uh, and I made him laugh, <laughs> and that was, <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. He's one of the funniest people that are living today. So I was like, man, I'm glad I was able to make you laugh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been a good feeling for sure. sure. Uh, not to go back too far, but, uh, and you, you know, since you already got the part, but uh, can we see that audition, what it would be like for to play a Bush in a Jordan Peele movie? <laughs> I don't know how I'd play it, but I'd figure <laughs> it out, dog. And that's the thing with Jordan. He'd direct me, too, to make sure that I got it down. Yeah, yep, yep. Jordan's crazy. Like he, And that's one thing. You could just trust him. So if he was like, all right, so if you're a Bush, right, what are you feeling? What are you going to do about being a Bush? I'm like, yeah, I don't. So do this. All right, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> so... There we go, there's my bush. So fans have been theorizing that NOPE stands for not of planet Earth. What four words do you think best describe NOPE? Best, oh wait, just best four words? It doesn't have to be a part of the whole? No. Oh, no, okay. No, no. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to spell out NOPE. Doesn't <laughs> Cause I'm like, yo, that's a tough question, yeah. man. Uh, <laughs> never opposing people ever, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> let's see, um, spectacle. Uh, for sure, spectacle and trauma, uh, unity and attention. It's a lot of uh, different stuff. So that's, yeah, that's what I'll give you. Uh, yeah, those are the four. How about four words that best describe Jordan Peele? Very caring, cares a lot, understanding, genius, truly, truly a genius, and uh, risky. Big risk taker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'd give, I, I can go on. I, I wish I had a million words to describe him. It's, uh, it's such a layered human and uh, great artist, but uh, even better human, which is, which is, that's tough to beat, man. That's tough to beat. Yeah.
Yeah. Well, I think you have to be, you know, a pretty terrific human to be a really good artist, too. You got to pull from something, right? Yeah, yeah. And or there's, there's some mad people, man. <laughs> there's well, some mad people that are great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. I purposely wrote something without any regard to how possible it was. What's the last thing you said nope to? Going out, man. I hate going out. So <laughs> if someone's like, hey, you want to go do something? I'm like, nope. I'm trying to chill at home and just vibe out. Um, yeah, big homebody over here. Um, so, yeah, if someone's trying to get me to go somewhere, hell yeah. nope. <laughs> yeah. Well, since we have all the time at home, then what film should we watch to get ready for nope? Ooh, films again. Um, get Out and Us are definitely different from nope, but I'd say this. Watch those two films and give Jordan Peele's movies a rewatch because you'll find a different meaning in them every single time. And I think that's the experience you'll have within Nope. It's a completely different film, and I think this can possibly be the most ambitious film that Jordan's ever done. And um, I'd encourage people to go back, rewatch, because his work gets better and better as you watch it, and you find more meaning and you find more things to connect to with each each experience, um, and it's so different. Like that's, that was what was crazy prepping for Nope, was going back and just kind of rewatching Jordan's work and finding new things in it every time. And I'm just so impressed by that. So those are definitely two films that I'd say to watch uh, to prep for Nope, um, although it's very different. I didn't mean to scare you. Yeah, yeah. What else? Big spectacle that kind of flipped the world upside down and made people afraid of things. Uh, Jaws. Yeah, I feel like Jaws is great as well. It's a big spectacle that I feel changed the world and brought fear uh, to people. And it was just big blockbuster, different, uh, changed the film game. And I, I think Jordan's gonna do the same thing. He's gonna change the film game. I'm ready for no, because I watched Jaws, Get Out, and Us this weekend just so happens. So, so you're ready to go, uh, man. All right. Perfect. Come I'm, on I couldn't over, be dog. more excited. Yeah. Come through, Alex. Bro. You're ready. <laughs> Love to prove that, wouldn't you? Get your name into the National Geographic. What moment shocked or scared you the most in a Jordan Peele film? Ooh, man. Lupita is pretty damn scary in Us. That's a haunting performance. Little girl. Run! Oh man, yeah, the family. The family in Us is so terrifying. Uh, when the, um, uh, s spoiler alert, maybe, I don't if people, come on, watch Us. If you're watching this, you probably watch Us. Uh, so uh, when the tethered people come to the family's home, that whole bit is so scary and haunting and that is crazy actually to think about. And now I wanna go watch it because that scene and sequence is insane. And shout out to those performers that had to work on that day because figuring out how to perform with yourself basically and like understanding each character. Woo, that's great. I didn't have to do that. I did not have to do that. So yeah, I'd say that's, that's a pretty terrifying sequence. So I, I'd give it that. I'm sure it's hard enough to scare another actor, but to be able to scare yourself I know, right? playing the role. Oh no, dog, there's times where I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh my gosh, in the morning, and I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, who's that? No, no, him, no. <laughs> on that, who was the easiest to, to scare on set? Probably me, I don't know. I feel like, uh, Daniel's pretty cold-blooded, man. Like, that dude's, mm. his chill meter and heart rate stays the same. Like, you're you're not gonna scare that dude. Like, that, that's a true hero in life, so. What's a bad miracle? Big guy worth for that. I feel like Steven's pretty chill as well. He, he's got two kids, you know, he's vibing, he's got life going. Um, I feel like, man, would Kiki get scared? I feel like Kiki, I feel like you could scare Kiki a bit. Um, and you could scare Jordan too. I think Jordan could get scared, low key. Yeah. Yeah? I feel like if you got him, he'd, he'd, he'd get got, yeah. Cause he's not expecting it, right? Like, he thinks he's safe, that he's the one doling out the scares. He's the scarer. So, yeah. And I think the same thing with Kiki. I feel like Kiki would be a prankster in that sense. But, yeah, maybe maybe myself, Jordan, and Kiki. We'll do a, a tie. Yeah. Oh, and also uh, another uh, another person who would not be Michael Wincott. I feel like that man fears nothing. So, <laughs> I'll be rooting for you. Who made you laugh the most on set? 
Oh, it's a pretty funny squad. Um, in between takes, Jordan is so funny, man. Like, and there's times where you forget because he's such this our tour director that you're just respecting the craft that he's putting out right in front of your face. And then he dishes out some funny thing. Like, we're shooting on film on this film, and there's a point where he hopped in and starts directing while the film is rolling. And he was just, this is the funniest moment where he's just like, okay, I am here uh, wasting a bunch of money. So I'm going to walk <laughs> off now. And it was so good. And he has, that's just like an example. So this, and he does so many impressions. Like he does impression of Hoyta Van Hotema, the DP on this. And it is so good. It is hilarious. So um, Jordan was really funny. And, uh, Kiki in the film, and Kiki in real life, Kiki on press tour, everything. Kiki is just one of the funniest humans, like, ever. It is insane. Shout out to Kiki Palmer. And I'm excited for people to see Kiki Palmer shine. This is the year of Kiki. So, yeah, Kiki's so funny. And there's, I feel like there's a lot of good, funny, comedic moments and beats that weren't even meant to be funny. You'll be getting a call from my supervisor asking how my service was. Five stars, Angel, five stars. Yeah, we always hear about how good of an impression is, and have seen it, of course, of Jordan is on set. Uh, does anybody do a good Jordan impersonation? Ooh, has anyone really tried Jordan? Because <laughs> um, I, I feel like Jordan's a chameleon as well, like, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, like, let me... I feel like I've done it, but like just in conversation, but like not even meaning to do an impression, kind of just being like, mm, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, and just doing like little Jordan moves. But uh, yeah, I've never seen anyone kind of properly do it. So I don't know. But um, yeah, J Jordan's in, like, every, that's, the world knows that he's an incredible impressionist, but to see it in person and him break it out is so funny. There's a time where. Uh, we were working, and then uh, I'm a fan of like the UFC and combat sports uh, and mixed martial arts. So he he started talking about the bit that he did with in Key and Peele, and he started doing the exact like performance. And I was like, I'm getting the live Key and Peele show in front of my face right now. He'll whip out the wow. Barack Obama here and there. So it's just, yeah, it's insane. It's insane. Okay, he he know we just talking here, right? We just getting people interested in the fight. Because I'm, I'm sorry, it, is this crazy? Did Barack ever direct a scene or, you know, no. tell you where, where to hit your marks? <laughs> I didn't get that experience, so I'm kind of upset yeah. about that. So I gotta talk to Jordan. It looks like we gotta work together again so <laughs> I can get that, that experience. So. <laughs> Lastly, what do you consider the role that changed your life? Oh, the role that changed my life. Uh, this is it, yeah, man. This is the. This is my breakout. I feel like. I mean, I, I've done this. Uh, I, I've done a series regular role on the show called The OA on Netflix, and that definitely changed my life for that section of my life. And I think this is about to be a whole other layer pulled back as well. And uh, I'm so excited for the world to watch this film. I'm very proud of this film. I'm proud of the performance. And um, yeah, I think. I, I hope that my performance is received, is received well, and I, I gave it my all, so I, I hope people approve of it, and yeah, I, I think this has the opportunity to be the one to change my life, and it already has, working with the best of the best, you know, working with Oscar Award winner Daniel Kaluuya, Oscar Award winner Jordan Peele, Oscar nominee Steven Yeun, uh, Emmy winner Kiki Palmer, and legend and Michael Wincott, so I'm just... And Oscar nominee, Hoyta Van Hotema, like it's literally the dream, yeah. dream team. I call this the miracle job because this is further than what I could ever dream of. Um, so I, I couldn't even calculate this in my own mind. So this is the miracle job.